UB.net presents Poker Tonight. Coming up, Theo Jorgensen wins the WPT Grand Prix de Paris. Heading to Vegas for the 2010 World Series of Poker, we've got the top five things to do when you're not grinding at the tables. The Amazing Race's Maria Ho joins us in studio to talk about the year of the woman and goes on the clock. Will she break for Shell Canatella's record and claim the most prestigious prize in all of poker? And Dana Workman dishes the latest poker buzz on P2N Online. All coming up on Poker Tonight. Thank you for joining us on our final Poker Tonight episode of the season. I'm Scott Huff. As always, I'm joined by Joe Seabach. Maria Ho coming up a little bit later on in the show. But right now, waiting backstage to find out whether or not she will take home all of the glory and on the clock. It is Trishel Canatella. It's happening. It's happening. It's getting real in here, if I might say so myself. I feel, like, I feel like Maria may come from behind and snag this thing at the last second. I really hope not. We've been teasing it quite a bit that Trishel is going to take this thing down. Well, Dana Workman is here to tell us what's coming up a little bit later on in the show in P2N Online. What's up, Dana? Thanks, Huff. Lots of good stuff to cover in P2N Online this week, including a very revealing video from Jennifer Harmon on why she deserves your vote for the WSOP Tournament of Champions. You don't want to miss it. The World Poker Tour visited France last week, where it held the Grand Prix de Paris main event. An impressive field of 247 players entered, creating a first place prize of 633,902 euros, or more than $804,000. World Series of Poker Europe bracelet winner Theo Jorgensen had a huge chip lead heading into the final table, and this Dane used his big stack aggressively to take down the title. Antoine Amoret of France finished second, collecting over 328,000 euros, or more than 417,000. World Poker Tour online hostess Jackie Williams spoke with Jorgensen after his win. Theo, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you have just won your first WPT title mm. and 633,000 euros. How are you going to celebrate is what I want to know. I'm, right now I'm drinking champagne faster <laughs> than anyone here in the room. That's why I'm, how I'm celebrating right now, but it's just, it just feels fantastic. Oh, I bet it does. Thanks, Jackie. Now, seems that final table littered with names of people that, unfortunately, we've never heard of. Definitely was. <laughs> so last week, we talked about how difficult it can be for people at home to track poker without a formal league. We know Jorgensen. He's won a World Series of Poker Europe bracelet, so clearly an accomplished poker player. But the casual sure. fan may not know who he is. Do you think no-name final tables actually help to grow the game, or do you think they turn off the casual fan? No, I think it's a bad situation. It's exactly what we were talking about before. People tune in to televised poker to see Phil Ivey. They want to see the big names. They want to see Barry Green signed. They want to see these guys. Okay, when you go, of course, George Jorgensen does have a bracelet, so I'm not going to completely cut the guy down. But only in the WSOP main event is sort of that dream alive that anybody can win. The rest of the tours, I think you want to see the big names. Right, but we even saw that with Phil Ivey at the final table this year, it was a completely different situation. The final table performed better overall. People Absolutely. were more excited having a big name at the final table. Moving on, big news in the poker cyber world. As it came out, that Supreme Court nominee Elena Kagan is a card shark. NBC's Pete Williams hailed her as an, quote, accomplished poker player. And CNN even reported that Kagan plays poker and drinks beer. Now, Sieves, she passes through the nomination hearings. Do you think there could be a shot here that it would be a good thing and we'd see some of the gray areas surrounding online poker maybe clarified? Well, I'm just happy that she drinks beer. You know, I think that's the most important part there. No, it's, it certainly is great when more people in Washington play poker. And it helps overall, of course. But let's not lie to ourselves and convince ourselves that she's going to ride into town and somehow change all this legislation and make a bunch of decisions because that's not going to happen. No, I mean, poker players, presidents, they've gone hand in hand course, for a long time and yet no real change is being seen on this front. Thank you for making the easy segue for me there. As the PPA last week introduced a petition to Congress for an online poker carve out from the UIGEA, here's what PPA Executive Director John Patrick Pappas had to say about their latest efforts. We have filed another petition, which I have here in my hand, uh, which we already have the support of more than 22 members of Congress. We're working to get broader support. This petition isn't a delay, per se, but it, it would exempt poker and other peer-to-peer -peer style gaming from the enforcement of the UIGA. For full footage of the interview, visit thepPA.org. Now, over the past week, security issues involving the Sirius Network, which includes UltimateBet.net and AbsolutePoker.net, were brought to attention by watchdog site PokerTableRatings.com. Joining us on the phone to address those issues is the COO of Sirius, Paul Leggett. Paul, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, first off, if you can just tell the people at home exactly what was brought uh, to attention, what was the latest security alert for Sirius? 
Just over a week ago, a security vulnerability was identified that involved our client server communication and the means we used to protect it. Uh, we believe that it's very unlikely that somebody was able to exploit this vulnerability um, because they would not only have to crack our code and decipher these messages, but they would also have to access or intercept these messages that they went between a player's computer and our servers. So it's, it's fairly complicated and we do have other additional layers of security that would help us identify if somebody was able to exploit something like this. So we're very confident that it, uh, it wasn't exploited. However, it is very, very serious because it is theoretically possible that it did happen. So we take this very, very seriously. It was originally identified by PokerTableRatings.com, and we since, as soon as they identified it, we were able to increase our security, and we're now using the absolute latest standards for client-server encryption, and that's been verified by PokerTableRatings.com. Paul, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, gentlemen. For the full audio version of the interview, visit PokerTonight.com. Finally, let's take a look at the major online winners this week. Gavin Gavs 101 Cochran had a huge weekend in the Poker Stars scoop. First, after a three-way chop, he won the $5,000 buy-in Pot Limit Omaha 6 Max event, banking $169,625. HN Kakarado finished second for $130,000, and Entropy XX was third for $110,000. Scott Siever continued his impressive online and live run this year by finishing 7th for over 23000 Additionally, Gavin finished 5th in the $500 buy-in scoop Pot Limit Omaha 6 Max event, the event that was taken down by Curbinator for over $68,000. Mike Sir Watts Watson came in 2nd for $50,310. In the full tilt 750 k guarantee, it was Marshall1121 who bested a field of 3497 to capture a first place prize of over $100 and $32,000. Samson 724 finished second for $80,250. And the UB 200K guarantee Ender 55 outlasted a field of 903 to capture almost $45,000. When we come back, we break down some numbers in our final World Series of Poker preview. We reveal the top five things to do when you're not at the tables. And Dana Workman dishes the latest gossip and buzz on P2N Online. Stay tuned. Poker Tonight is brought to you by UB.net. Rate. Stack. Home. Welcome back to Poker Tonight. Scott Huff alongside Joe Seabock. We're just a few minutes away from Dana Workman and P2N Online. But first, Joe, it's time for our final 2010 World Series of Poker preview. We've covered value tournaments. We've talked about field sizes and what you can expect. But we haven't discussed, and this is something that people are going to want to know out there. Because the good stuff. Every event I've played in at the World Series of Poker, I've busted in the first three hours. You've got to know what to do when you're not at the tables. You've got all of Vegas to choose from. What would you tell people to do when they're uh, busted out of the World Series of Poker? Well, I've been known to bust out of a tournament every now and then at the WSOP as well. So, the past couple years, I've really gotten a good handle on how to kill some time. Here are five things that I would recommend doing when you're not playing at the WSOP. First off, rehab at the Hard Rock. This legendary party takes place every Sunday during the summer. While they had a reality show based at rehab on cable last year, it's still a kind of a see it to believe it event. While the debauchery that goes on may not be your cup of tea, which if you're using the word cup of tea, it's definitely not, probably have a good point. Even if you're not participating in the Bacchanalia, it's good people watching. If you can afford to sport for a cabana, it's highly recommended. Now my second spot is a little more chill, Lake Mead. It's a totally unique setting, just 45 minutes away from the Strip. Water, outdoors, bikinis, you really can't go wrong. Plus you'll get to scream, I'm on a boat, all day. Now my third spot is if you're more into the club scene. For that, I recommend Pure Nightclub at Caesars Palace. It's been one of Las Vegas' most popular spots for a long time, outlasting many of its competitors. Just be warned, though, if you're an average-looking dude without any hot girls on your arm, buy a VIP pass or prepare to stand in line for a long time. For number four, you've got to see a show, right? I'll go with quality plus value here. So if you want to relive one of the finer moments from the movie Knocked Up, then check out Mystere at Treasure Island. And finally, number five. You can't really make a list like this without including at least one strip club, right? So gentlemen, go to Sapphire. At 71,000 feet, it's the world's largest strip club. It's got skybox.